All right, let's, uh, I think it's time, so uh, we can debate the merits of HSMs. I'm sure. <laughs> um, so my name is uh, Audie Lee. Uh, I'm the PTL for Biowican, and uh, this is the project update for uh, Stein. So, I'm sorry, did you start? You did? Okay, good. So. All right, so uh, just as a refresher, if anyone uh, who's here doesn't know what Barbican is, although it seems like most people do, I think, um, Barbican is the secret and key manager for OpenStack. Um, and so what that means is that Barbican users and operators can store things like encryption keys, uh, passwords, TLS certificates, those kinds of things in Barbican. Uh, one of the big use cases for Barbican uh, within OpenStack is uh, Cinder volume encryption. So uh, volumes are encrypted, um, and Cinder actually asks Barbican to uh, generate a, uh, a key, a symmetric key, provide a reference to it, and never actually leaves Barbican. Um, and at that point, well, it does leave Barbican because then Nova, whenever Nova wants to mount that volume, it goes and it asks for that particular um, secret, um, and that's delivered to Nova, um, and then Nova mounts the volume. So those kinds of things. Uh, but it's a number of different places as well, too. Uh, like all the other OpenStack services, there's a REST API, um, and that's designed specifically for creation, storage, and management of, of the secrets that are there. Um, it was founded in the Havana release of OpenStack. It's about, I guess that makes it about six and a half years old. Um, in the last release, there were about 50 contributors uh, from various uh, companies, about 20 companies. Uh, so still relatively active. Um, for Stein, um, there have been a number of uh, new features uh, that have been put out there. Uh, most specifically, uh, just in terms of a usability thing, uh, for the longest time, um, our client has made you provide a, um, a full reference, you know, um, to the secret. So you do like an open seat, open stack secret store. You'd get back an href with. HTTP slash you know, all the stuff and a UID at the end. Um, and you'd have to pass that back in, which was very different from what all the other OpenStack services were doing. Um, there is a uh, ability now just to provide that UUID and it'll allow Keystone and so on to figure out where, where that secret is, com is coming from. Um, there, in terms of uh, security, in, in terms of the back end, so behind the front end, you've got uh, an API, a REST API that talks to all the other OpenStack clients. In the back end over there, you've got um, various plugins that are available, and these talk to different things. So the most simple uh, plugin you have there is something called Simple Crypto, which is basically just a key in a file uh, that is used to encrypt things. Uh, but you can also talk to, as we were talking a few minutes ago, uh, to things like HSM and to Vault uh, and so on. Um, and so there have been various improvements there. Uh, there. There have been and will, because, you know, Stein's not over yet, um, uh, there will be improvements to the HashiCorp Vault plugin to make it a little more production ready. Um, there is, has been a number of performance testing and interop testing uh, that's happened for various HSMs. Um, before, we used to be able to, it was tested against the SafeNet HSMs, and now we've specifically tested it against Talos and ATOS Bull. HSMs, and there are, we've ended up having to parameterize the PKCS11 plugin to make it easier to um, integrate with various HSMs. So if you're an HSM vendor uh, and want to try and integrate with Barbican, it should be a lot easier for you to do so, just providing the, the pr appropriate parameters and, and value for those parameters. Um, certainly, if you are and you're interested in doing it, come talk to me, please, and um, we'll see if we can figure out how to get, get that going. Um, and there will be some testing uh, against the soft HSM with a PKCS11 uh, by the end of Stein. Uh, rolling upgrades, we hope that's been something that's been going on for the last couple of cycles. We hope to finish it off uh, this cycle. Um, and uh, then there have been various things that have happened on the cross-project side of this uh, things. Uh, first of all, Castellan. Uh, Castellan is actually part of Oslo. Um, uh, and it is basically just an interface to talk to for applications to be able to store and retrieve secrets. Um, the idea behind Castellan before was that we didn't necessarily want to require people to have Barbican, um, so we provided a generic interface whereby people could then go and use, uh, use this interface to get secrets. Um, as it turns out, the, there's, uh, you know, at this point, the only implementation of Castellan really is Barbican, 
Um, but it is a very simple interface, and so a lot of people can use, have tried to use it in different ways. Um, and a lot of the OpenStack uh, services use Castellan now to go and get their secrets, and they go get the, through Castellan, and they go to Bob again to get their secrets. The um, importance of it being a base service is that uh, with the you know, sort of a renewed focus on security and people being much more focused on security in OpenStack, uh, we want to be, uh, applications to be able to say, you can store a secret securely somewhere, and this is a place to where to get it. Um, and that means that uh, applications, you know, as part of an OpenStack development, you should have a place that is a Castellan compatible key store somewhere where you can get secrets. Um, at this point, there are two implementations for, for Castellan. One is Vault, um, and the other one is Barbican. Um, there has been uh, additional work to integrate with Triple O, specifically deployment with those HSMs, uh, which I mentioned over there, and setting everything up. Those are still in flight right now. Uh, Fortanix, uh, and you know, there were some guys over here, they're using Fortanix. Uh, they use, actually use the PKCS11 plugin. Um, and they're using it to talk to, to Fortanix. Uh, Fortanix actually uses uh, SGX, which is an Intel technology to create sort of a, uh, a secure enclave of memory, basically some encrypted memory um, that's, on, on that's you know, hardware-based uh, that you can use to store secrets in. Um, and I just found out this morning that uh, Airship, uh, Deckhand, uh, and so on are actually using Barbican uh, to store secrets. They have a bunch of uh, files that they use for configuration and they, t they take those files and some of them they specify them as encrypted and they store uh, a reference to Barbican there, uh, to, the, to the Barbican key there and they store their keys within Barbican as well too. Um, finally, because of all the performance testing that we're doing against the HSM, we've added a bunch of performance tests within Rally as well too so, for, so we can test the performance of Barbican. Um, just some housekeeping, we did policy and code before uh, but we're supposed to do policy and doc encode, so documenting the, uh, the policy as it goes through. So that's being done, that has been done in, within Stein. And then of course the community goals that everyone is uh, hoping to get through as well. So, uh, so just again, um, sort of talked about this already, but uh, the secure the plugins that are in the back end. We have Simple Crypto, uh, we have PKCS11 with, so with SafeNet. Um, we have a KMIP uh, interaction, so if you have a KMIP device, you can talk directly there and you can store your secrets within a KMIP device. Uh, there's DogTag, uh, which is, you can also use to store your secrets and that can also talk to HSMs as well too. Uh, and then finally, Vault. Uh, and then of course within Stein, uh, we've implemented and tested changes for the PKCS11 plugin to talk to all of those uh, different soft HSM and those different other HSMs as well too. And of course, Fortanix. Uh, as well. And then the roadmap uh, for, you know, in future, we're hoping to do, you know, more SGX stuff, uh, more TPM integration, uh, kind of go from there. Um, clients, not much has changed there other than, as I again mentioned, uh, we do have the UUID instead of just the href that was out there, but basically we have the REST API, uh, we've got a CLI, you know, Python client, and then of course Castellan itself. Okay. Uh, documentation, you know, we have all those those things and we're constantly trying to improve the docs. Um, and uh, these are all the projects right now that are currently using Barbican in some way. Uh, you know, of course we have integration with Keystone, uh, Oslo, uh, you know, again through Castellan, uh, talking that way. Um, and then of course, uh, Cinder for Cinder Volume Encryption, Nova uh, also Cinder Volume Encryption as well as Ephemeral Volumes. Uh, Glance for image signing, uh, Sahara to store passwords and so on, Magnum uh, also storing passwords and um, certificates. Uh, Neutron Octavia for storing uh, keys and, and certificates for um, load balancing, TLS on load balancing. Uh, Swift to do encrypted volumes, uh, encrypted Swift objects. Uh, they, you can, they store the key within in Barbican as well too. Um, Tacker Tattoo um, is another project that does SSL uh, sort of SSL as a service and provides the suits and so on, and they've stored their, uh, everything within Barbican as well, Browbeat, um, Tempest plugin, and then of course within Stein, uh, Deckhand, uh, Rally stuff, and the Triple O stuff as I mentioned before. Um, so access policies, uh, pretty much the same as, it, as it's been. 
we found that we've needed to augment the polities a little bit. So we usually, we typically have Oslo policy, but then there are some additional things that we've added uh, to uh, Barbican to be able to do. So for example, on a secret, you can say, um, you know, I, you can add an ACL to a particular secret that allows someone that's outside of your project, for instance, to be able to access that particular secret. Um, or you can specify that a secret is private, in which case only you, the creator, and not everyone else within your project can access that secret as well, too. So those are those, those kinds of things. All of the, pro, all of the code, again, uh, for policy is in code, um, and then and it's just basically overwrites and so on that you put in your policy.json. Um, in the future, you know, we're just gonna, uh, there will be a read-only role that Keystone's been talking about for a while. Uh, we, will, we will add that. We actually have a, a, a role like that called auditor. And uh, yeah, if, it, if, if Keystone ever gets their act together, and it will, it will happen there. Yeah, Keystone's taking everybody else. Yeah, well, we'll follow you guys, so. Um, so, uh, maturity, uh, uh, we've been at it five out of seven. Uh, for a while now, we are uh, hoping that the offline upgrade, the, uh, that kind of stuff, will, if we, once we finish it, will put us at six out of seven on that. And I don't remember what the seventh one is, but I think it's multiple languages or something like that. We'll probably, we'll never get that, so, most likely. So, uh, just as an indication as to how things are going in terms of uh, users, uh, again, there being a, a much more, a greater emphasis on things like security uh, and so on. Uh, we're seeing much more interest in terms of, of deployers. Uh, we're, uh, you know, apparently we're deployed in production in about 10% and people are testing or are interested in Barbican. So we're talking about 40, 40, yeah, 45% or so of deployers that from, at least from the user survey seems like they're interested or actually working with Barbican. Um, that's, you know, gone up considerably over the, over the last few years. Um, particularly as this is a, you know, a service that is optional or has been optional and people have been resistant to creating, you know, deploying yet another service. Um, but as security becomes more important and auditors come in here and say, what are you doing with your secrets? Uh, this becomes much more important for people. Um, and uh, in terms of new deployers, I guess on the survey, there's also something about, uh, you know, POCs and new deployments. You know, 9% are in testing right now, 25% are interested. Um, so there's much more of an uptick in interest uh, in Barbican. Um, finally, um, you know, we need help. Um, if you, if you have, uh, if you're an HSM guy and you want to integrate your favorite HSM, uh, come talk to us. We'll, we, uh, we'll be happy to help you, uh, TPMs and, and so on. Um, I know that, for example, the Photonix guys are talking to us uh, about creating an upstream gate um, so that they can do you know, integrations and so on um, against all of that. I know some of the HSM uh, vendors, for example, are talking about doing Barbican uh, tests themselves as well too on all of their, whenever they put up a release and so on. So if you're an HSM guy, definitely come talk to us. Um, uh, as far as, you know, documentation, if you're a doc person, we, we always need help with docs. Uh, um, there was a UI, if you're a Horizon person, we would love to get a, a UI going uh, for Barbican. There was a UI for Castellan, which I thought was a terrible idea. Um, and it's, it's still there, and, and I'm hoping to, to kill that project in the next, uh, the next cycle. Um, but simply because you, do, you don't want to access just Castellan, you want to access a specific implementation of Castellan being Barbican or something like that, uh, because there really is no, no security that, that way. Um, so you, there's too much capability of shooting yourself in the foot if you just have a Castellan UI as opposed to a Barbican one. Um, and uh, again, uh, cross project, any kind of integration efforts, anything, uh, if you are someone that, from another project that would love to see something uh, from Barbican, uh, you know, just talking to the, the airship guys, this, uh, deckhand guys this morning, there were at least a couple of uh, possible things that they wanted from Barbican to make their lives easier. Um, we were, were totally interested in, in, in finding out what you want. Um, and uh, in fact, it sort of dovetailed into a couple of ideas that I, I had been mulling around um, and hadn't got enough uh, um, motivation for yet, but now they might be, so we'll see how that goes. Um, and again, all contributions welcome. Uh, we are, I don't think I have a, a slide here with, with everything, but it's, you know, Pound OpenStack Barbican. We're a very friendly group. We'd love to get comments, questions, uh, anything else.
So I think, yeah, I still have plenty of time. So um, any questions? Sure, yeah. So the question, uh, I want to... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, um, so um, we have some... Per so then I will repeat the question for the recording. Uh, so the, the question was, uh, do we have any uh, performance results that we can share uh, in the comparisons of, saying, say, simple crypto and using an HSM uh, for things like key retrieval and, and, and so on and so forth? Um, what we found, uh, what we did is we did performance tests where there was no encryption. Um, and then we did a test where you had Barbican with simple crypto and then a test with Barbican with an HSM. Um, and what we found was uh, there's a significant difference between using no encryption and using encryption, um, <laughs> which, you know, uh, yeah, it is what it is, right? Um, but there really actually wasn't that much of a difference uh, between using a, an HSM and not an HSM. And I don't have the specific numbers in terms of a percentage or someone, but if, if, if I looked at the difference you know, in a, on a graph, you know, if this was no encryption, uh, this would be with encryption, and then like, just slightly more than that was, was going to the HSM. Um, so there's, um, uh, the HSM, of course, is you know, it's, it's optimized to do, um, to do crypto and, and so on. Um, so it's, it's, uh, there was, there, the differences that we did see um, that were significant who had to do with actually how Cinder, um, w with more work of that extra work that Cinder was doing um, than work that we were, we were actually doing within the Bobbigan side of things. The Bobbigan side of things was actually relatively quick, but for example, we tested this in, like against a Ceph backend, um, and when you do a Ceph backend and you bring in the key when you're retrieving, um, you know, uh, mounting the volume and so on, there, there's actually, they do a significant amount of work when they actually create that initial volume uh, in terms of adding things to the Lux headers and various headers and so on and so forth that adds uh, a bunch of overhead there. Um, and so the overhead was actually more there than it was really in the bottom of itself. Um, so I, I, can't, I don't have exact numbers with me, but it wasn't as significant as I thought it, was, it would be. Yep, yep. He also, uh, he also says it's going to have warranty. You'll soon to buy, you buy something else. If anybody can tell me what is cool these days, we would be happy to learn. I don't know. Yeah, HSM yeah. vendors, if you happen to be around. <laughs> it, has <to> <laughs> it has to be cool. But um, yeah, I mean, we still, obviously, it's, it's yeah, I mean. <laughs> So just to repeat for the uh, for the for the recording, the question was which HSM which HSMs are cool, um, and uh, I, I can't tell you that right. I do know that we 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 still support uh, you know SafeNet and we support uh, uh, Talos and Itos. Um, and those are the three big ones there. Uh, and then Fortanix is is kind of cool as well too. So you, you can probably check out what they do for Fortanix. Yeah. The SDK? Yeah. Um, if not, is there somebody looking at that? Oz, do you know the answer to that? I think. There was some code out there, but I'm not sure how I uh, updated Yeah. We'll read them on. That's okay. Okay. Yeah. Beat up money. You don't can't do everything. He can't. Yeah. I mean, he'll just, he doesn't have to make more of the rest, but. Okay. Yep. The, uh, the, sorry for the recording. The, the question was. Uh, are we in the OpenStack SDK? And the answer is, I don't know. We have to beat up Monty. So. Okay. Any other questions? Um, is there a particular reason why you deposited the uh, certificate counselor? Yes. So uh, the question there was, uh, is, there a way, is there a reason that we deprecated um, certificate issuance part of, of Barbican? So before Barbican, uh, was, uh, you know, Barbican had a, an API whereby it could act as a registration agent 
uh, for a bunch of CAs. You, you define a bunch of CAs in the back end, and, and you could uh, ask Bobbikin for a certificate, and then we'd go to a CA. Um, and uh, I know a lot of that stuff was there because I wrote a lot of that code um, and then ended up having to rip it all out. Um, and the reason uh, that it was ripped out um, was that Having, uh, going to a CA is, it, it's a whole slew of work. It's a lot of work. Um, and there wasn't enough, there weren't enough people in the community at the time uh, that were willing to maintain uh, that code. Um, and so uh, we, we kind of went back to the whole you know, Unix philosophy of do, do one thing right and do, do it well, right? Um, and so it was just a huge amount of code that, you know, wasn't wasn't being supported by a, a community at the time. For, uh, yeah, so um, so that's the reason it was pulled out. Do I know any project that would be able to replace that? I know that people have talked about creating a project to replace that for forever now, um, and it's never happened yet. So every summit I come to, I, I hear. Someone talking about that and it just doesn't happen. <laughs> so, I, I would love, love that to happen, but there's it's it's complicated. It's not. Absolutely, absolutely, yes, yes, and uh, there's there's definitely a need for it for sure, um, and it's it's but there's no there's no clear way. Forward, so, yeah, I'd love to resurrect that code in a different project, but it's, you know, yeah. Anything else? All right. Well, thank you, guys.